All right, I think we're live. I think we are live. And try to set this up. And while I set this up, we'll go into um, what I'm doing here tonight. Um, as I'm looking on here, let me give a shout out here. I see Night Tiger has uploaded a couple of uh, videos in the, last, in the last day. Most recently, uh, best flea market comic book haul ever. So head on over to Night Tiger's Comics uh, when you get a chance and look at that video. Uh, best flea market comic book haul ever. I'll have to go see that after I finish with this tonight. And then a day ago, Night Tiger Comics uploaded best ever flea market comic book haul part one. Okay, so it's a two-parter. Uh, two-parter. So rush on over when you're done here. Rush on over to Night Tiger uh, Comics and um, find out what he got. Because it's always fun to get a great haul and then to share it with other comic book collectors. All right, here we go. Um, I uh, put out a um, I put out a little commercial blurb for this uh, a few hours ago, and basically said that I am. Uh, I, I got. Um, hang on just a second while I get this. I sold three um, hot comics. Okay, got nothing. Not, I got no problem with comics being hot. It happens. I mean, uh, I've bought hot comics before, and, um, you know, I like hot comics as much as anyone else. But here's the deal. Um, these three hot comics are, are all of a sudden hot because of the announcement of a movie, okay? And um, the movie, I think it's a movie, the movie is The Authority. And, uh, and so as a result, I went ahead and struck while the iron, is hot, iron was hot because, to me, and really, there's very few, if any, modern age comics that are uh, sacrosanct, if you will. Okay, um, very few of those. Um, they're modern age. Modern age comics are fun, but uh, we have so much, uh, so much, so many superhero related um, TV and movie um, events going on these days that um, that you know you just can't. Uh, you just uh, they're going to be hot, flash in the pan kind of hot. Okay. And so, um, tell you what, give me just a second here. Nobody's watching yet, so I'm going to go back over here because I forgot my drink, and I'll be right back. And back I am. Okay. Had to go, uh, you know, had to get something to wet my whistle. Um, little Dr. Pepper and cream soda, zero sugar. Okay. Uh, zero sugar because of course I am a diabetic and, um, that's, I've got to watch my health, got to watch my blood sugar. So anyway, so you had these, um, Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Sleepy reader. Good to see you. Um, have these, uh, three hot comics, uh, as a result of the announcement of an authority movie. And, um, what uh, what we have is that what I did was I took three uh, really nice shape you know high high grade comics I had at Stormwatch number thirty seven Stormwatch volume one number thirty seven which was the first um, uh, the first work of Warren Ellis and Tom Rainey on the book which really started it into a uh, a, a direction an exciting direction for the for the story for the property now I may be wrong about this. <laughs> But I'm, I'm just speaking personally for me, so I can't be wrong about it. I'm speaking personally for me. Uh, obviously, there were readers for that of that title at the time before Warren Ellis came along. But for me, the uh, the, the the book was doing nothing um, for me until Warren Ellis came on as a writer. And Tom Rainey just really complimented his uh, writing style and everything. Just to, made it a very serious superhero book. Very serious. So I took. I actually have two copies of uh, Stormwatch number 37, Stormwatch volume 1, 37, number 37. I kept the other one uh, because I like the run. It's a great story. I started, made me want to start rereading it again, which I've been doing. Um, got most of the run, I should say. Well, but I sold my really nice copy of that. I sold, uh, yeah, Stormwatch and Ellis. Great. Ellis made the, really made the property pop and uh, story-wise and character-wise. But, um, I, uh, so, so I sold that one. I sold the big one was, um, Stormwatch volume two, number four by Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch, 
which is the first appearance of Midnighter and, uh, and Apollo. That is, that book is really hot right now, burning up. I've seen one go in uh, near mint condition, uh, if, and I thought it was a little bit crazy, but I don't remember if it was $107 or $111. And uh, hey, that's, that's to each their own, that's great. Somebody probably getting it, sp spending that much on it because they figured they could get it slabbed, get a 9.8, and then who knows what, it, what it's worth, okay? So that was the other one I had. And then the third one I had was the actual um, authority when they changed the name of the team to the authority, the authority number one, also by uh, Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. So those are the three that I sold. Now mine went for rather low uh, on the low end of what I've seen all three of those books go for. Uh, Stormwatch Volume 1, number 37, and uh, The Authority, number 1, actually both went for $35 a piece, separate auctions, uh, which I found that interesting. And then, and then Stormwatch Volume 2, number 4, First Appearance of Midnighter and Apollo, uh, that went for $70, okay? So for that $140, I went out and I, I got to participate. We were in Tulsa that weekend. I got to participate in a couple of different things uh, that I hadn't in a long time, and one that I had no idea that I was going to get to. One was Wizards, of, Wizards Asylum Comics and Games. You all have heard me talk about that store in Tulsa before. That's the one I go and do Black Friday at. Um, and uh, it's a great, it's a great store. Uh, love, uh, love going to uh, Black Friday sale every year, uh, every every November at uh, at Wizards Asylum. But they were having what they called a mini con, and they have a, two or three of those a year, I believe. And so I got to, I got, I made a great deal on a couple of uh, books I've wanted for a long time. One I, well, both I used to have, but one I hadn't had since my childhood. The other I hadn't had since collegehood, okay? Um, I didn't go to college in the hood, all right? But uh, anyway, uh, so I reclaimed a couple of books that are big books right now, have been for a while. But also, uh, I got to go to the Tulsa Flea Market, where there's a great guy there um, who sells comics. His name's Aaron. He, he sets up and sells comics uh, a couple of weekends a month, I believe, is, his, is how many times he does it. And then, um, actually, I also got to go to uh, Shadow Mountain Comics and get a bunch, grab a bunch of great quarter books. So, I'm going to show you a lot of stuff tonight. Uh, all for, and keep in mind, all, this is why I hunt the dollar boxes. This is why you should hunt the dollar boxes. Because um, all three of those books that I sold on eBay, because uh, they've gone hot, they've gotten hot, all three of those uh, I bought within the last couple of years, pulled them out of dollar boxes at Vintage Stocks or at Hurley's Heroes in Joplin. All right. So anyway, having said all that, I want to get into, for those three little books that no doubt will, um, will come back down at some point, at some point within the next three to five years, I'd say. I got a lot of books that I think will probably never come down much. They'll always just tick a little higher, a little higher, a little higher, okay? And so that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to start with the two books I got at the Minicon at Wizards Asylum. Don't really, you're not going to really have time to, um, um, yeah, I, I agree. Thank you, Sleepy Reader. I think I, made, I think I did make a good decision. The thing about deciding to sell the hot books, and I always feel like I need to, do the air quotes, hot books. In my, in my videos, I may in the, in the future figure out a way just to do air quotes. Uh, not even the word hot, just air quotes whenever I say hot book. Um, but I think a good decision, especially if it's a modern age book, is uh, if it's popping, man, if people are paying top dollar for it, sell, sell, sell. And then be ready to go back at some point when it cools down because it most likely will and buy it back if you, really, if you like it. But, uh, you know... My dad used to do stuff like that when I was just a young pup. Dad was a gun enthusiast, and he um, he would uh, he would not quite the same thing. But guns are one of those things that never depreciate. Guns and gold, basically. <laughs> okay, guns just don't de don't depreciate. And um, and he would sell a gun if they had an unexpected bill come up. This is when he and my mom were newlyweds, almost, or for the first ten years of their marriage. He would pawn a gun. And it would always be at a pawn shop where he knew the owner, and he'd tell him, he'd say, don't sell that, I'm coming back for it, okay? And he would, uh, he would pay off that, that bill that needed to be paid off, and then he would work uh, some overtime, and, uh, he would, and then he, from there he would, uh, 
you know, he would uh, work some overtime, get that money and buy that gun back. And uh, that's just, you know, while that's a little bit different thing, you can, you can sell your comics when they're hot and uh, you can almost be certain that they're going to, there's going to be an opportunity for you to buy them back at much lower than you sold them for. Okay. Um, they'll always cool down as the, as sleepy reader says. And at the end of the day, there's actually plenty of copies out there. Uh, when he, when he, when the hype ends, the value always goes back down. That's absolutely true. And the only thing, the only books that it's not true for these days are of course, golden age, many silver age, and even some bronze age. Okay. So what I'm doing with my collection, and I have, I've been doing this for the last year or so, uh, while I always have the books from the modern age that appeal to me, they're my, they're, they're, I've got a soft spot for these books. And, um, but, but for the most part, uh, they're fun reads and I can let them go. I do that uh, periodically. I'm selling less on eBay these days because just because of um, different reasons and <laughs> that I won't go into. And I'm setting up uh, local garage sales or local comic sales at my in-laws home in Tulsa, uh, you know, pumping it up a few weeks before on, on Facebook and that kind of thing. And, and I'm going to be doing that again in March, by the way, for those who are listening, who, who listen to my, to, to my YouTube channel and watch my videos who are in my area. So in Tulsa, sometime in late March, there'll be another, uh, I'll be having another comic, uh, anywhere from 25 cents to a dollar comics, okay? And that's how I get, earn a lot of my money uh, to buy the, the good stuff. But I've been doing it for the last year or so, been going back and really just kind of changing my collection, making it more Bronze Age and before, um, because it just makes sense to do it in my mind. Uh, but Bronze Age, for, for a couple of reasons, Bronze Age, uh, is, you know, a lot of the great stuff, a lot of the great stuff was done in the Bronze Age or before, and uh, also just the stuff that's more likely to maintain a particular value. So that's just the way, that's the way it is. And then the other stuff, like some of the stuff that I keep is stuff that's just special to me from the modern age. And so anyway, uh, there's, there'll always be modern age books in my collection, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, the two books that I got at the um, Wizards Asylum Minicon and uh, one is, uh, I know you'll know this one, the Avengers King Size Annual Number 7 with uh, Thanos, uh, the Avengers, and the, uh, yeah, and the great Jim Starlin book. I'm not going to take it out of the bag. I mean, you know it. It's in high grade. Uh, but uh, the, the reason why, you know, I think I will take it out. The reason why it was so cheap and I got it, I actually got it for uh, 12 bucks. Okay, 12 bucks. And the reason I got it for 12 bucks is because there's a teeny tiny little stain on the uh, UPC down here. And you might be able to see it down right, right there. That's why it was marked so far down. And so, you know, nice looking spine and everything and just, you know, gloss on that book. And, and uh, yeah, a few creases here and there, but it doesn't matter. This, is, this was a great book. This is a book long before anybody cared about Thanos, long before anybody cared about... Uh, the uh, Infinity Stones or anything like that. Um, the, I, the, I had this book and I loved it. And the, the Marvel 2-in-1 annual, that was part two of that story, which I am now hunting down. But uh, anyway, in the second one, the second book I got at the Minicon, just two books there, was uh, Detective Comics number 576, Batman Year 2, part two. And I also have this story. This is Todd McFarlane's first Batman work. Uh, this is a wonderful, beautiful, now classic Batman cover. This is not Bronze Age, uh, but this is one of those books. It's modern age, but it's one of those books that's most likely going to keep its value. Okay, so there are there are modern age books out there that will do that. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, that was a great uh, great book. Uh, I have that that year two story collected in a trade paperback that I just recently got for a, for a pittance. And uh, so these, I won't even crack open. I'll put them away because uh, this is the last in the run that I have the others. And um, so anyway, I'm glad to have that story again in floppy form. Okay. All right. So those two books. Okay. Next, um, these are the books that I got at the, at Aaron's table in, um, at the Tulsa flea market. Okay. So uh, at my friend Aaron's table at the Tulsa Flea Market, I got a handful. I got a nice little stack here. And there is a magazine on top there. I'll show it to you here in a moment. I want to, I want to make sure you understand this guy has a lot of comics. 
and he's always looking to get rid of some comics. Um, and so that's this is what keeps him. He's buying collections, and he's getting rid of stuff uh, on Saturdays at the flea market, Saturdays and Sundays. And so uh, this book, uh, this this stack of books, I got for twenty bucks because Aaron's a cool guy, and because Aaron has so much stuff. And so the first one is Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction number one. Um, I'd never even seen this book, never heard of this book. It is a Marvel Comics black and white book, okay? Um, I believe I say that. Uh, let's see, it's um, Magazine Management. So yes, that's, uh, I believe that's Marvel, okay? So, um, and you got some great, um, you got a, that's, a, that's a Don Newton cover, by the way. Uh, lots of great sci-fi stories. Every review I've had, I've talked to people about this book, or I've gone online and, and seen it and, and, and looked it up and researched it a bit. Every people seem to love this magazine. Uh, they 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 fondly remember these stories uh, that they that in some cases that they grew up with or they read when they were very young. And so great, wonderful black and white art by various creators in there. And uh, you know, of course, again, science fiction stories. So that was one of that was one of uh, the books that I got for the $20 bill. And through no fault of Aaron's at all, just as I was showing this to you, um, the cover came loose. The last staple gave way, but that happens. It's still gonna be a fun read, and I'm not uh, not weirded out about that at all or disappointed by that at all. Uh, I am gonna take this one out because this is very cool. This was, um, this is Space, Space Family Robinson, Lost in Space, uh, number 27, April 1968, the year I was born. Uh, it's a great gloss on that. Good looking book uh, there. I won't probably won't even press that. Uh, but just to, neat to have these. I'm going after more of these Gold Key and Charlton Silver Age books when I can. And, uh, and, even, and even Golden Age books when I can. But uh, great, great book there. Great cover. Don't know who did that cover because quite frankly, I'm not really... I'm not very knowledgeable on the gold key stuff, okay? Um, next is, um, and this, I'm gonna leave most of these in the, in the plastic bags, but Walt Disney's uh, comics. I don't know what number that is. Well, now I'm gonna have to look it up. Okay, look at, open it up and look, because it's a 10 cent, okay? I don't do very many, and it is a Dell. I don't do very many, um, take the tape off, folks. Take the tape off of your bags, okay? Uh, I don't do ma very many Dell books, but when I see, when I get, get them for such a great price, I will. Um, Sleepy Reader has started collecting Space Family Robinson recently. Uh, love the covers and much of the interior art is Dan Spiegel. Okay, nice Dan Spiegel work. Okay, good to know. I appreciate that. That is a very nice cover, and it's obviously a painted cover, so it's great stuff. All right, Walt Disney Comics and Stories, uh, number volume 16, number 4, 19, January 1956. And again, nice book, nice gloss, a little bit of a stacking crease there, uh, but, um, you know, good looking book for what it is. Love the ad on the back cover, just the look of it, just the design of it. It's, it's 50s design, okay, a 50s comic. Oh, this is great, okay? Now, January 1956, which means it was the, was the publication date, which means was in the it's the date in the Indusia, which means it came out before Christmas. And look at this great, you got a great Santa Claus ad there. Uh, Santa Claus hawking bicycles and hunting equipment and skates and all kinds of great stuff there, okay? So gotta love that, all right? Uh, that was in that $20 stack, okay? Next, one that I didn't even know about, certainly wasn't on my radar. Uh, leave this one, uh, darn it, I can't, I keep saying I'll leave these in, the bags. But uh, then I can't because, um, because I want to know what year they were published, okay? This is um, Homer the Happy Ghost, number one. Uh, now, it's a reprint, I want to say. Yeah, this is 19, November 1969 issue, but it was reprinted from a 1957 issue. And I don't know if it was Timely who published it before. Marvel? I don't think so. I know I knew it was a reprint, uh, but I, I don't remember which company um, published Homer the Happy Ghost in 57. So somebody else out there may know, Sleeper Reader you may know, or someone else may know, okay? 
Um, very cool stuff, though. Uh, that was in that $20 stack. Now, a couple of, um, a couple of books that I read back in the 90s that I really liked, and so I just went ahead and got it again, or 1999, I believe. Incredible Hulk number 427 and 428 uh, with art by Liam Sharp. And uh, his early art, I loved that. I loved that stuff. This is a great story with the Hulk and the, the man thing. And so I was, I, that was just a gimme. I just wanted to throw that back in there. See, again, I, I like some modern age books, okay? I like me some modern age books. And um, yes, clearly uh, Home of the Happy Ghost, <laughs> clearly a Casper imitation. You think? I think so. I think we're safe safe in uh, assuming that. All right. Next is um, the, uh, what this, this is the Despicable Deadpool number 287, which is a cover homage to Amazing Spider-Man 129. These lenticulars, yeah, that's going to come off okay there. Okay. Got picked that up as well. That was one of the lenticulars I didn't have. And so I'm happy to have it. Great stuff there. And um, so got that in that bunch. Bernie Wrightson. Um, masterwork series of great comic book artists, Bernie Wrightson, the macabre. This is issue number three. This is a, this is a three or four issue mini, that mini series that I've been looking to hunt down for quite some time. Let me give you a closer look at that. Great Bernie Wrightson stuff there. I actually got a cop, got a, got an issue. So now the, uh, the, the, uh, the search begins in earnest. Okay. Also, uh, a, an eighties book, um, Alien Encounters number one. Another series I've been looking to uh, hunt down and read just because I've always heard it was very good and very well done. Don't know that I would read it and keep it. Probably read it and pass it on to another um, another collector, either give it or sell it for a pittance. All right. Uh, also, another Werewolf by Night. So slowly, also slowly work, work, working down that, that run. Uh, werewolf by Night number 22. Okay, this one has a little bit of water damage, but not much staining. So I'm going to go ahead and press it out, and I think it'll be just fine. And then, really, speaking of um, Lost in Space, this was a let's let's talk about the um, uh, inspiration for Space Family Robinson from uh, Classics Illustrated from October 1947, Classics Illustrated number 42, Swiss Family Robinson in really really nice shape. Nice shape. <coughs> Pardon me. And, um, yeah, October 1947. Okay. So, uh, great stuff there. That is the last in that stack of books for 20 bucks. If you ever find yourself in Tulsa on the weekend, make your way to the Tulsa Fairgrounds. Uh, flea market starts at 8 a.m., Look for a guy who is dealing comics and books, a guy named Aaron, okay? <coughs> Pardon me. Got something stuck in my throat or something itching my throat. Please forgive me. I feel like I, I think I feel a uh, coughing fit coming on. So I'm trying to head that off. <clears throat> okay. All right. While, all, while at the, um, the fairgrounds, <coughs> well, at the flea market, there was another man there. Tulsa from Oklahoma City. Sleeper eater, are you in Oklahoma City? Are you in OKC? Um, Tulsa's about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes maybe, uh, east of OKC. Not a, bad, not a bad drive at all. Let me show you a couple other things I got from another gentleman at, um, at the flea market. Uh, and these, he, he had picked up a small collection, so he was selling these for half off. This is Marvel Tales number 10, reprinting the first, first appearance of Craven the Hunter. These Marvel Tales, um, okay, you have, you have a best friend in Oklahoma City, uh, so you visit him quite often, maybe on an annual basis. That's great. Make your way down to Tulsa some weekend and, um, and, uh, and, and hit, the, hit the flea market at the fairgrounds. You won't, I don't think you'll be sorry. Um, but anyway, Marvel Tales number 10. Uh, reprinting the first appearance of Craven the Hunter. Of course, this would be the first reprint. These Marvel Tales that reprint important, um, important uh, appearances, first appearances, are starting to heat up. This one I got for half what the what the sticker price said on it. So I got this for fifteen bucks. The sticker on the back that says thirty, and uh, he was selling them for half. 
I got that for 15, which I consider that a, a good buy. It's a, got a good spine on it. Uh, you can read everything on the spine, no splits, no tears, and it's got that great black cover. Okay, and then and then also going along with that, and this one I got to take out. This one I actually got um, for uh, $11. It was marked at $22. This is Strange Tales number 163 with a with a fantastic um, Jim Steranko cover and interior art, also with fine, fine gloss on there, okay? So Strange Tales, number 163, with uh, Nick Fury and Doctor Strange, and uh, so great stuff there. Uh, I was really happy to pick those. Were the, they had no idea that I was going to pick those up. Of course, there's always, after I picked up uh, books from Aaron's table, I did go around and look around because there's always somebody else that's selling comics and or comics-related um not comic related goodies, okay? All right. <laughs> Here's the big stack. The big stack is the stack of 25 cent, cent books that uh, I got after I went, first I went to um, the flea market, then I went to, uh, <clears throat> uh, Wizards Asylum, the mini con, and then I headed over to a wonderful place called, um, uh, Shadow Mountain Comics. I almost forgot the name of that wonderful place. It's so wonderful. Shadow Mountain Comics in Tulsa, which what Shadow Mountain does, I've told the story many times, they buy huge collections, and then they the first week of the sale, they sell these books for 10 bucks a piece, which tells you that there's some good stuff in the collection because people find some great deals. The next week, they go down to $5. Next week, they go down to a buck, and then after that, they go down to 50 cents and then four for a dollar. Uh, I'm telling you, as you're going to see, that even when they, even after the books have been there for weeks and they're at uh, a quarter a book, you you still find some great stuff there. <clears throat> um, so let's just start. I, what I found was, and I love Marvel Classics comics, and some of these I already had, but for a quarter you cannot go wrong. So Marvel Classics comics number twelve, the Three Musketeers, twenty five cents, y'all. Just speaking a little Oklahoma in there. 25 cents, y'all. 25 cents. Okay. Number 13, The Last of the Mohicans. The last of those Mohicans. Those brave Mohicans, okay? Number 15, Treasure Island. Don't have time to go through and, and talk about who draws each one, uh, but uh, they're always entertaining. They're always handled very competently, uh, art-wise. Many of them have, uh, Dino Castrillo is, uh, don't know if he was one of the tribe or not, but, uh, that's not me being mean. That is, there was a, a group of artists that worked for DC and Marvel in the, in the, in the Bronze Age called the tribe. They were Filipino artists. And, um, <clears throat> so anyway, just a great, great stuff there. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but, um, great art in there. Uh, so that was number 15, Treasure Island. Number 16, Ivanhoe. A lot of these had great Gil Kane covers on, okay? These are all quarter books, folks. I mean, my goodness. You can't, uh, it was, it was, you, you think at quarter books, you'd, you'd never really start thinking about your wallet. But when you find books like this, uh, like these, you start thinking about your wallet after a little bit, little bit and start having to thin out. Uh, number 17, The Count of Monte Cristo. Lots of great Marvel classics comics okay so count of Monte Cristo <clears throat> number 21 master of the world and this is one I'm not uh, Jules Verne okay one I wasn't uh, very uh, familiar with but can't wait to read it it's also interior art by uh, Dino Castri Castrillo uh, cover by Gil Kane great stuff I mean this stuff th just th just the, the Marvel Classics comics these will be hours and hours of entertainment uh, that I'm just excited about. Uh, Food of the Gods, Marvel Classics Comics number 22. Uh, I actually have this one, but again, a quarter. Okay. Um, number 23, Moonstone. Now, these I do let my boys read, but as you know, I don't have a problem with um, comics on a spinner rack. Because there are such things as beaters, okay? And some comics I'll uh, buy that are a dime a dozen. I mean, literally, there are comics that are out there that are a dime a dozen. A dime a dozen and I'll, 
I'll put them up here so that the boys can enjoy them. Um, but these I won't. These are just too you know, They got the nice square bound, square bound uh, spines. And, uh, you know, just I want to keep them nice. So Moonstone, uh, number 23, I'm going to do it. I kept saying I wasn't going to do it. Uh, let's see. This is also, oh, my goodness, okay. Script and design, wait a minute. Uh, Don McGregor, script and design, Danny, Dino Castrillo, uh, artist, okay. So, yeah, another Dino Castrillo, Castrillo. Ernie Chan, or Ernie Chua, depending on what <laughs> when he was working, what he decided to sign, did the cover, okay. Ernie Chan, who inked a lot of wonderful, and drew a few wonderful, incredible Hulk covers back in the day. Um, Marvel Classics Comics, number 24, she. I have no idea about this one, but I love the deep colors on there. The purple, the reds, uh, you know, great stuff. Okay, and another great Gil Kane cover. Okay, so Dan Castrillo, and in this case, Rod Santiago, was also uh, working on this, but Dan Castrillo got some good work out of Marvel Classics Comics. Uh, Marvel Classics Comics number 25, The Invisible Man. All right, you got to love that. You got to love The Invisible Man. Um, H.G. Wells, classic. Uh, also, oh, Danny Cast Dino Castrillo. I keep saying Danny. Dino Castrillo and Rudy Messina. Uh, Rudy Messina, I believe, was one of the tribe. All right. Uh, Kidnapped. Classic Comics number 27, Kidnapped. Okay, great stuff there. The stack is building. This I, I love. Um, an Edgar Allan Poe classic, and uh, this one actually has a, a, a lot of a lot of artists. Um, Rudy Messina, Young Montano, Rod Santiago, and Mike Golden are, are all artists in this um, in this book. Huh. Okay. Oh, there's the Mike Golden. Story, oh, very nice. Very nice. Let me show you a little bit of the Mike Golden story there. There's the splash page. The cask, the cask of Amontillado. Amontillado, Amontillado, there you go. Okay, the pit and the pendulum, I'm sorry. <laughs> Marvel Classics Comics, number 28. The pit and the pendulum, Edgar Allan Poe classic. Um, man, these are gonna be so much fun to read. Okay. Um, Marvel Classic Comics number 29, The Prisoner of Zenda. Now, not being a big video games guy, I know Zelda is a big, Prisoner of Zelda uh, and a, is a big um, video game, I think, and property, and I think it extends into other properties, but uh, I don't know, I've heard my boys talk about Zelda, Prisoner of Zelda. When I saw this, I thought, oh my goodness, well, Prisoner of and I was thinking Zelda, it has its roots way back in some classic uh, classic story. But no, this is Zenda, that's Zelda, okay? That was my mistake, uh, because I am an old man. All right, Rico, Rov Rico Rival is the artist here. Um, and I can't tell who the cover artist is. It's not Gil Kane, but it's a great looking cover, okay? So that is Marvel Classics Comics number 29. Marvel Classics Comics number 30, Arabian Nights. It looks like a Gene Colon cover. Gene Colon cover. And uh, really very cool cover there. Arabian Nights. With art by Young Man Manano. Young Manano. Okay, a science fi fiction classic by Jules Verne. Uh, with Rudy Messina art. Now we're talking, now we're talking, I like Rudy Messina stuff. This is uh, Marvel Classics Comics number 31, The First Men in the Moon. The First Men in the Moon. Love that. Uh, who, who, who drew that? That, ooh, ooh, I see a name. Oh, I saved it. Saved it. No deemed corners. Oh, um, I know this last name. I can't see his Weiss. Weiss, is it Alvin Weiss, Al, Al Weiss, Alan Weiss? Anyway, he does great detailed work. And uh, that's uh, who did that cover there. First Men on the Moon. Um, yeah, all the Marvel Classics, they're not, they not very common on YouTube, are they? I don't see, Alan, thank you. Alan Weiss, Alan Weiss. He does great detailed work. Um, okay, hey, thanks for the, I missed that last uh, comment. Uh, she was by H. Ryder Haggard, a classic adventure novel, kind of politically incorrect these days. Ooh, 
Okay. Well, now I really can't wait to read it. All right. Uh, last couple of Marvel Classics comics. Another one uh, with a great Gil Kane cover. Uh, oh, the Philippine, with the Philippine tribe. I was telling you about the tribe. The Philippine tribe as artists. That's all it's listed. Doug Munch, Doug Munch. Never know how to pronounce his last name. Script and Philippine tribe are the artists. This is White Fang. Marvel Classics Comics number 32. Great Gil Kane cover. I wonder if I could get that. Uh, this is interesting because I, I don't think I've seen them sign their work like that before. I don't know if you can see it or not. Filipino, Philippine tribe artists. But uh, anyway, and then last one, um, and this one I have as well, but quarter, two bits, two bits. Um, does, it, does it mean you're, I'm old if I remember, uh, I remember a shave and a haircut, two bits. Okay, so that's before even my time, but I'm sure I heard that from a parent or grandparent. All right. Marvel Classics Comics number 34, last one here. Looks like maybe, uh, no, I don't know who did this cover, but uh, it's Robin Hood. And it's a beautiful cover, beautiful cover. Um, really nice Robin Hood cover. Um, I may go back and I'm thinking about what you said, Sleeper Reader, I may go back afterwards and uh, put Marvel Classics Comics in the title of this um uh, of this of this video oh this is great rudy messina and alfredo alcala artists on this book and uh, alfredo alcala is another one of my favorites uh, out of that filipino uh group that group of filipino artists okay I'm trying to find a really cool splash to show you well oh, this is good enough here you know it's just some great um the crap i think you're right i think the cover may be alcala that's why I couldn't make it out. It has, yeah, it's A and A, but it, that's all I had. So that fits. I'm glad. I'm glad you're watching, reader, because uh, otherwise the simple stuff would escape me. Uh, and if the simple stuff escapes me, you know that I have no hope with anything more than simple. <laughs> all right. So Robin Hood. Um, there you go. So great stack. All those a quarter a piece, and we're not done yet. Um, couple of couple more Bronze Age goodies here um a couple of cold comics and these are mike plug interiors uh let me go ahead and pop these open <clears throat> because some i've already had some comments i posted some of these on a comic page or two in on facebook and somebody was like i can't believe you're getting mike plug for a quarter it's like yeah you know that's pretty cool so yeah uh cold creek cold the conqueror or cold the destroyer i'm sorry number 13 and it is indeed Mike Plug Interiors. Let me just give you that first opening page. Beautiful, very cool Mike, very distinctive Mike Plug work. Okay. Love Mike Plug's horror stuff as well, his uh, Frankenstein, and uh, and um, he did some the early some of the early werewolves. And he just had a very distinctive style. I mean, easily as distinctive as Wrightson's. That's what... Uh, so cool about some of these horror artists from the Bronze Age. Uh, they just they just had a look. Their work had a look. It's very cool. Oh, there's a kind of a neat little backup. Hang on just a second. A little backup story in here with, uh, I'm trying to find, there's no art information, okay? A little backup story in there. I didn't realize the Cole comics had backup stories. He Fled in the Night was the name of the story. And you have a nice uh, picture of a cool dragon there. On the first page there. So anyway, uh, a quarter book there. Quarter book. I'm going to keep saying that. Plug. Yeah, for a quarter indeed. Very, very cool stuff. And um, so yeah, that's another one. Make a list. Make a list, Sleepy Reader. Um, when you, If you do make that trip down to Tulsa, Shadow Mountain Comics in Tulsa. Um, Shadow Mountain Comics. All right, and then Cole... Destroyer number 14, very glossy, very glossy, with wonderful plug art uh, in, on the, in the interiors. Just give you the opening, the opening page there, opening splash page. So um, gotta love that stuff. There are some artists that it doesn't matter what the book is, okay? Unless it's just a book that really harms your sensitivities, that, that, that happens. 
but pretty much whatever the book is, if particular artists do the work in there, then um, then you you buy it uh, if you're a fan of their work. Oh, this is cool. Okay, some of these stories, this reprint, this is a Stanley Joe Manili Golden Age reprint from somewhere. My name is my name is Death. Okay, I just thought of I just flashed on a movie. Um, it's uh, Undercover Blues. Okay, I don't remember the actor or actress's name, but they're a married couple. They're spies. They're on vacation, but they're really on they're on they're on vacation, but they're really on a on a uh, on a case. And uh, one of the villains is a is just a series of comical errors. His name is Muerte for death, and he'd say, "My name is Muerte." So, it's the guy in the comic book there. My name is Death. All right. This was simply for reading. It's really, it's really messed up down at the bottom of the spine. But this is Wolverine number eighty-five. Uh, just, just, um, just for the Larry Hama. Is it Larry Hama and Cubert um, uh, artwork in it? I, I liked the, uh, the the Adam Cubert run on Wolverine uh, back from the from back in the nineties. Yeah, Larry Hama script. That's the reason why I got it for a quarter because it's quarter. So yeah, so what? If that's uh, a little bit messed up there, I don't care. Uh, I'm getting them all so I can read them all through. That was the the series or the the uh, the run where um, Hubert did the art and Wolverine was down to the bone claws, and, and he did a, he did the whole wild man regression thing. Great stuff. I just remember being uh, extremely entertained uh, when that came out, and so there you go. All right, another. Another modern age book that is just, uh, it, it um, uh, tickles my, tickles my uh, younger fan bone. Um, it's a book that, it's a book that I was reading when particular, when the particular storyline came out. Um, yeah, Hama Wolverine was definitely a high point, All, no matter who the artist was. Uh, Larry Hama, a very good writer for that character. But uh, I'm going to tell, I'm just going to say something real quickly. I, um. I've reviewed uh, the storyline, the long storyline of Captain America from the uh, late 80s uh, called The Captain. I'm looking to re reestablish, re re uh, not reestablish, reacquire that trade paperback. I don't want all the issues. But the story where the government, the US, U.S. government took Captain America's shield away from Steve Rogers. You're no longer Captain America, they said. And they got went out and got John Walker, who ended up being a Big big mistake uh, because it just wasn't uh, wasn't um, uh, he wasn't all there. Okay, he meant well, and of course he went on to become the U.S. agent. This book and I just this the whole thing caused me to go back and watch the six issue six issue six issue uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier um, miniseries again on, from on Disney Plus. Not bad, not bad um, for what it was. It was fine, uh, very entertaining. Uh, but this is Captain America number 350. This is how it really culminated. This is how it should have culminated. With Captain America in his captain outfit, slugging it out with John Walker. And there you go. In a special, large size, 350th issue. Great stuff. Um, I'll tell you, Kyron Dwyer did such amazing artwork in this. And of course, Mark Grunewald is near legendary on his Cap Captain America work, his Captain America writing. But just great stuff, great, uh, just to, one of the best knockdown, drag out uh, fights you'll ever see in comics. Read it if you haven't. In fact, go get the, um, go online and get the uh, Captain America trade paperback entitled The Captain, okay? Uh, because it covers the whole story. I believe it even has the, uh, the issue of Iron Man in there that happened, that took place during Armor Wars where, you know, he makes Cap the shield. And Tony Stark makes Cap a new shield, and everything is just very cool. All right. Uh, the Hero, Mage of the Hero Discovered, number 15. Uh, just working on that first volume again. Great stuff. Love um, uh, love Matt Wagner's Mage. Um, yeah, that part of Cap lore is very good. Uh, I recommend it. And even with the, even with the, um, the, the, the TV show and everything being out there on it doesn't take away anything from from the book, from the comic book stories. They're still, they still stand up. 
Okay, great stuff there. Um, so anyway, the mage, yeah, the mage, I actually enjoy the mage as much or more than I enjoy Matt Wagner's Grendel. And so, um, very big fan. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, Hulk number 12 variant cover, um, it's picked it up because again, it was a quarter and these keep, uh, the collecting community can't decide whether these are hot or not hot, not hot, hot, not hot, but it doesn't matter. They're fun to read. And I'm actually going, or going through and trying to acquire them all again because they're fun reads. They were quick reads. But Ed McGinnis' art, he was perfect for the Hulk. Just perfect. And then um, Hulk number 19, part of the fall of the Hulk storyline. Four quarter. Okay. Got a four quarter. And um, so, great stuff. Um, also, Marvel Tales number 147, starring Spider-Man, uh, reprinting the first appearance of the Enforcers. Great stuff there. Great stuff there. And then again, just finishing out some runs. Um, I picked up uh, Jack Kirby's Fourth World. That's John Burns. I finally finished John Burns. Um, I finally finished acquiring John Burns' Fourth World, I believe, with issue 17, 18, 19, and 20. I think that's the entire run. But again, I've got issues 1 through 20 now, and I can begin to read. That's what I do. And literally, this one has been years in acquisition. Uh, so I'll wait if I have to. Along with that, also, uh, this series, this, this uh, spinoff series of Batman and, and the Court of Owls stuff, Talon. I was missing Talon issue number six. Issue number 14 and issue number 15. So that I'm getting very close to, to all of that, all of that run as well. And then I'll read. I, I will say though, I had the, when I grabbed the first five issues, I went ahead and read the first five issues because it's great stuff and uh, lots of fun. Okay. One last book. This is really, this was really just to put into my uh, Submariner run uh, because I don't have this, the, the original printing of this. This is the Marvel Legends reprint of Namor Savage, Sub Savage Submariner number 67. Okay, and I'm sorry, I love the costume. I love the Bronze Age, co Bronze Age costume. This costume uh, is better than the green swim trunks. It just is. It looks regal. It looks like something that would be jetting through the ocean, okay? By jetting, I don't mean, you know, with the help of a jet belt, like Wonder Man's or anything like that. I just mean, those look like fins under his arms. It looks like something that would slice through the ocean waves. So, I like it. So anyway, that was my haul. All of that, this entire 48 minute video, every comment came by way of selling. Storm, Stormwatch number 37, Stormwatch number four, and the authority number one. Uh, sell those hot modern age comics and then expand your collection with better stuff and then go back and get them later if you want. Do that because it, it, it'll, it's the best thing you do for yourself. Um, Subby's costume. Yeah, a bit disco, a bit. They could do something different with the... Uh, the vest look there, maybe totally enclose it. Okay, no, no bear, no bear midriff, maybe a V-neck. Okay, I can I can get on board with that. Okay, because V-necks are classics. All right, but yeah, but other than that, it's um, I'm I'm on board, especially the belt. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, you know, um, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, uh, my tastes are varied which is one of the reasons why it's so hard. I'm looking over here. One of the reasons why I'm, I'm doing a different backdrop here is because my wall of comics, wall of comic boxes looks so bad right now. Uh, I'm buying stuff and it's not getting, it's not getting uh, filed away as quickly as it should and it has long since caught up with me. And so I've actually started the process again of trying to file stuff away. Entering them on my CLZ app and uh, all that good stuff. So anyway, but thank you. I appreciate that, Sleep Reader. I do, I do very much. 
Um, I do like a lot of different things. So, yes, I'm eclectic in that. Uh, all right, but that's it. Hey, I uh, appreciate, uh, you appreciate, yeah, too many comics bargains. Too many comics bargains. That is a, it's a good problem to have, though. Good problem to have. Um, anyway, hey, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks for all the comment, comments, Sleepy Reader. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, be, be, if, you, if you haven't, I know you have Sleepy Reader for anyone who ha is watching. Because I said we had uh, other, other people watching who just never commented. But uh, uh, feel free to like the video. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. And um, share the video even. Uh, you know, put up a link to it somewhere. If you, maybe, maybe, those, uh, maybe someone is curious about the Marvel Classics comics. And you can find out uh, about a bunch of them here. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next video. And now I'll see if I can get out of this live video. Here we go.